but still have not looked in the mirror themselves. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, pass the mic straight across. So what's the difference between the sleep state and dreaming? Okay, good question. A dream is a little different. So we'll talk about our dreams. Now, for many of you, your dreams are a mixture of a sleep state experience and other things. But if we talk about the two types of states differently, because you'll get a bit of an idea of what's going on. When you're dreaming, there is a series of events in your, let's say this area of your life is your awake area of your life, right? In your awake area of your life, there are a lot of emotions that you're denying. And you're living, many of us are living in our facade and denying specific emotions in our awake state that actually still exist within our sleep state. And they still exist within our soul, these emotions. Now, once you set an intention inside of your soul to begin dealing with some of those emotions, in your sleep state, you make a choice to b become conscious in your awake state about some of those emotions. And the way you give yourself the message in your sleep state to your awake state that the emotion exists within you that you need to address or deal with is by having a dream. So a dream is a message usually from your own soul but sometimes combining with the souls of others, in other words some, sometimes with help from other people. The dream is a message to your own soul about what you're denying in your awake state in an effort to attempt to address the issue emotionally. Does that make sense? Now that is a very, very different thing to a sleep state experience. Can you see the difference? The sleep state experience, there is usually no desire to address particular emotions. And particularly when we're living in the first sphere a lot, there is no very little desire yet to deal with our emotions. And as a result of that, the, first, the sleep state experience is an actual experience that we're engaging in in the sleep state, sometimes we, which we remember, but very rarely. Most of the time, we don't remember it in our awake state at all. So our dreams, so here we are in our spirit body in the sleep state, and what we're doing in this sleep state is we're trying to give a message from ourselves to ourselves in our awake state to break through an emotional resistance that we have in our awake state. Something that we realise in our sleep state we would benefit from if we actually addressed in our awake state. Now, many of you have those kind of dreams and those kind of dreams have all sorts of natures, some of which are violent, some of which are uh, fear-based, some of which are angry-based, some of which are sexually based and so forth. That's not the same as having the actual experience in the sleep state. The reality for most of us is the actual experiences we have in the sleep state, the majority of us do not remember very clearly at all. The reason why is because we have huge amounts of judgment about what we're doing in our sleep state. Does that make sense to everyone? Which is very, very different to the dream state. Tara, thanks. If we... Hi. So is it more important to really focus on the emotion that we're waking up with from a dream rather than the actual really weird pictures that we got in the dream? It's always the emotion. Always focus on the emotion. Yep. Now, there will be two reasons for the emotion. We might have just had a dream which exposed the emotion to us. So focus on that. But there other times we just wake up. There's no recollection of any dream, but we wake up in a mood, whatever that mood is. Like the mood might be fearful. Mm. The mood might be frustrated. The mood might be annoyed. The mood might be sexual. The mood, and, and those kind of moods are an indication of what's just gone on in the sleep state. Right? And we need to allow ourselves to feel more into those moods that we have when we wake up 
and attempt to begin to want to know the truth about them. Remember we said yesterday, part of the facade is, de the facade is destroyed by our own personal integrity. And it's destroyed by our own desire for truth and our own desire for growth and so forth. Our own desire to trust God and have faith in God through the process. Now, if we're focused on this, on dealing with our facade, then what we'll finish up doing is we will not respond to what's going on in, you know, but to maintain the facade. We will, we'll start confronting our addictions in all areas, including when we're asleep. Yeah. Now, the majority of us don't do that at this point in time. What the majority of us do is we are addicted to the facade in our awake state and also to a degree in our sleep state. And what we attempt to do then is we attempt to do things in our sleep state that act out the emotions that we feel we're not allowed to have when we're awake. Right? So, so this is why we finish up doing usually a lot of things that are a lot more damage in our sleep state than we realise because we're trying... To, we're acting out the emotion rather than actually healing the emotions. Yeah? Now, dreams are an attempt to heal the emotion. So dream, dreams are good for us in that regard. They're an attempt to display to us the emotion that we have and then to go and address that particular emotion. That's the point of the dream. However, that is very, very different from what we do in our sleep state. Usually what happens in our sleep state, like I said, is a variety of different things. But unfortunately... The darkness we carry with us causes us to do very dark things that we would not normally contemplate in our awake state. Ironically, the bright things that happen to us are probably more extreme than the brightness that we have in our awake state as well. You know, it, it, Because we allow ourselves to feel what we feel when we're in our sleep state more because we're not as addicted to the facade because our body demonstrates the truth of our condition. Our spirit body demonstrates the truth of the condition. If we go to Advana, and then um, Rose, back there. She's keep, keep your hand. Is it right? No. Keep your hand up. Please. Um, I feel a bit afraid to say this, but I actually am having a lot of trouble believing you at the moment. Yeah. Um, and I've, I've got a lot of... Um, like, but can I just ask, who else has trouble believing what I'm saying at the moment? <laughs> you mean Ivana's alone? <laughs> I'm the only one. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think you're the only one. Maybe the only on. honest one. <laughs> the, only, <laughs> the only honest one without the facade. <laughs> um, yeah, and so, and I've got a lot of problems believing stuff about spirits as well, so I think it's sort of interrelated. Um, but, um, yeah, I don't really know what I want to s say. Oh, I don't know. I just sort of felt like saying that. Yeah, sure. Um, That's fine. You don't have to believe me. Yeah. <laughs> um, I've <laughs> just been finding myself zoning out a bit and being... Just yeah, and I put to you that's because you're being overcloaked by a spirit who wants you to zone out and anything that is to do with a discussion about spirits or a discussion about what's happening in your sleep state, they don't want you to find out about. Yeah, And this is a problem that the many of us face, is that our, the spirits that are with us want us to not know because then they can continue what they do. And yeah. we've got to look at our investment in that. We have an investment in that, that we're getting something from them. Yeah. And therefore we don't want to actually accept the truth. Now, the reality is, if you don't believe what's happening, just wait until, I, until you pass and then you'll find out. I don't think I want to do that. <laughs> well, that's the other option. Yeah. And yeah. The, there are some other options, obviously, and that is to open your mind a bit to get to the point where you're willing to investigate this more fully rather than just say, oh, I have trouble believing about spirits or I have trouble believing about what happens in my sleep state and then trying to just stay away from all of those experiences. You yeah. see, we're often led to stay away from experiences so that we don't discover the truth. And this is the influence that many spirits have upon us. When we have a desire in us to not know the truth, the spirits with us can say, you don't want to know that, you don't want to know that, turn off here, go to sleep there. And this is why some of you will find some, some discussions we have, it's like, you know, like, you know, half the audience feels like going to sleep and feels like tuning out, zoning out, not, not engaged. And then all of a sudden we start talking about another subject where there's not as much emotional turmoil in the subject. 
And everyone's wide awake then and enjoying that particular discussion. And this is a problem that we face is that we're often influenced to not listen to the things that would benefit us the most. Yep, thank yep. you. Yep. Just, be, just behind Jane and then to Jane. And who did I say over here? Oh, go ahead. Turn on. Yeah. yeah. Um, going back to the dreams, uh, I have had quite a lot of repetitive dreams, the same one over and over and over again. Yeah. Um, as well as I have a friend who co consistently has a lot of premonition coming through her dreams. Yeah. Now, with the premonition, um, like foretelling uh, events. Can I address the first issue first, this yep. over and over again thing? Um, that is to do with things you're ignoring in your awake state. Yeah. Always. Yep. And it's your soul trying to tell you, look at this, 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 look at this. And it's, we in our awake state go, oh, I just keep having this same dream and we ignore it. <laughs> you know, have the same, oh, you know, I don't understand it, so I ignore it sort of thing. Instead of trying to discover more about it. Yes, yeah, so it's, it's co um, different uh, concepts and everything, but with the same theme. So it's not exactly the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but okay. Yeah. Good eye. Now, with the premonition thing, is um, my friend um, being shown emotional injuries within her that perhaps she needs to look at that which are attracting events or what? Yeah, it's an interesting thing, the premonition thing, because it, it's actually you generally trying to tell yourself in your awake state about something that's going to happen. Now, a lot of people don't have much awareness about what causes the event to happen. And so what they do is they focus on the event and they're trying to feed themselves in their awake state. This event's going to happen. This event's going to happen. Be aware of it. Right? Not understanding for the majority of people that they could actually change the event if they chose to. And, and they almost look upon the event happening as something that they knew was going to happen. And then they have almost a fatalistic view of the future that anything that they have a premonition about will definitely happen no matter what they choose. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. She's uh, lucky that she's actually been, uh, been aware of what's happening and she's looking at what she needs to change. Uh, for instance, she yeah. had a, um, uh, a premonition that a caravan was go and a car was going to pull up across the street and uh, then it would explode. Yeah. And a, 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 probably a week or so later, her fa ex-father-in-law pulled up across the road with a caravan and the car, exactly, whatever. <clears throat> but um, it didn't play out But she, because she was aware of making different the, uh, choices yeah. um, bit after that particular dream. Yeah, and it could have been that some of her fear would attract that dad would leave the gas thing going or something like that, yeah. and then some spark or something would happen and all of a sudden the van would explode. But if she dealt with a particular fear of that happening, that, that event wouldn't happen, you see? Yeah. So, so a lot of those premonitions can help you emotionally if you're willing to address the emotion. Unfortunately, in the general population, when people have premonitions, they just become very afraid of them and they don't really address the emotion, so mm. there's a high likelihood of the event actually occurring that supports their feeling that life is fatalistic mm. and so forth, and Thank predetermined. Yeah, yeah. And who was next over here? Yes? Um, I'm just wondering about all these monks who decide to be celibacy, and all the Buddhist monks and all the Tibetan monks. Mm -hmm. uh, are they basically overcloaked? Many of them are, yes. Uh, yep. And also, like children being uh, put in in monasteries, and yes. isn't that an unloving act for these children to? And many yeah. times it is. Uh, what happens often is the child isn't got its own free will to decide whether it's going to be in a location or not, but rather that decision has Did been you? made by adults, usually yeah. parents, but often others, who are addicted to the concept that, you know, if they have some degree of purity that they yeah. shouldn't be sexual, and then they teach yeah. them to do that from a very, very young age. Unfortunately, many of these children are overcloaked while they're in the womb. So they actually mm -hmm. become overcloaked by a spirit while they're in their mother's womb, and from that moment on, the spirit basically um, oh. dictates almost their entire life. And, uh, and, and their entire life is pretty much led and created by the spirit's demands upon the child. Um, and the mother uh, and father are open to that control because they have a certain, usually a certain religious or belief and a certain set of emotional conditions associated with that religious belief. So all these Buddhist 
mythology and that Buddhist ma uh, celibacy and it's very and it's been praised a lot that people go there and praise these Buddhist monks and these Tibetan monks and yep. it's very big. Yeah, that's right. Well, if you look at almost any form of religion on earth, every one of them was seeded somehow in the spirit world. So, so there's been spirits who have actually guided the formation of every religion on earth. And, and these spirits are heavily involved in ensuring 